All right, for this pro tip, I want to share with you how we can use pivot tables to count non numerical or text based fields. So, when you're working with a pivot, that values pane in your field list is almost always used for quantitative numerical fields, your numbers. These are your fields that you can add, multiply, subtract, and summarize in different sorts of ways. But here's the thing it can also be used to analyze the count or the frequency of non numerical fields, of text based fields. And because you can't really aggregate or summarize text based on a sum or, or an average or a max, what we're going to do is use the count of summarization, which is the default, to display frequencies for each of those text based values. So let me show you an example of what I mean by that. We're going to be looking at our IMDb movie database here, and the idea is to understand the distribution of our data, of our titles, based on other fields like genre, for instance. If we pull genre into both row labels and values as a count, we can produce a view like this. And because we know that our source data is at the individual movie title level, meaning each row represents a different title, this tells us that there are 900 titles that fall into the action genre. There are 362 titles, or rows, that fall into the adventure genre, and so on and so forth. And you can follow this same approach for any non-numerical field, like ratings for instance. Follow that same process, pull rating into both row labels and values as a count. And here we can see that there are 91 G-rated titles. There are 553 PG rated titles and so on. So a great way to explore our data from a different angle to really understand the distribution of titles based on different categories here. Now, one thing to note, if you pull a numerical field into that values pane and it defaults to a count just like this, when you'd expect it to be something like a sum, that typically indicates that there's a problem behind the scenes that either your values are formatted as text or you may have blank or missing rows that are confusing Excel. So keep that in mind. Uh, to recap these common use cases, number one, analyzing the number of rows or observations in a data set that fall into specific categories or buckets, just like we're showing here. Um, also very helpful for generating source data for stats charts like histograms or Pareto charts, which are designed to work with frequencies and distributions. So with that, let's jump into Excel and practice counting some of our non-numerical fields. All right, so if you'd like to follow along, I'm in the table of contents here. Go to your counting text fields demo in the gray pivot table section. Go ahead and link out to that sheet. And here I've got a basic table layout, a pivot table that I've created on my IMDb movie database. And this is something like you'd expect to see, right? I've got a text-based non-numerical field like country here in my row labels, and I've got a value field, a numerical column like gross revenue here in my values, and I'm showing those revenues as a sum. Now, what if I didn't care about the total revenue that each country produced, and I actually just want to see how many times each country appears in my data set? Well, what I can do is pull gross revenue out, and all I need to do is grab another instance of country drop it into values, it's going to default to count of because I can't really summarize it any other way. And there you go. So now these counts are basically telling me the number of times this country appeared in the rows of my source data. So Afghanistan appeared one time, Australia 39, France 104. And now knowing my source data, because my source data is at the title level, I can interpret this count of country as the number of titles that were produced by each of these countries in column A. So as we scroll through, I see USA makes up the vast majority, 2,944 titles or rows in my data set. And I can adjust or modify this count just like any other numerical value. You know, I can sort my countries descending by that count, for instance, to really understand the distribution of titles based on the countries. And again, this same process applies no matter which non-numerical field you're looking at here. So instead of countries, we can pull both of those out and say, okay, let's pull in languages instead. We get a unique list of all of the languages 
here when I pull it into my row labels. And then when we grab the second instance into values as a count, as you'd expect, here we see the vast majority of titles falling into the English language, 3,543, got 37 French titles, 12 Japanese, and so on. Now, one last thing I want to show you is if we pulled language out and we actually grabbed title and pulled title into our rows as well as our values, what we'll see here is a one for every single row. And remember why that's the case it's because this is the granularity of our data. Our data is at the title level, meaning that each row is uniquely represented by a movie title. And that's why we see a count of one in every single row of this table. So there you have it. Great tool to keep in your back pocket. Excellent way to kind of observe and analyze your data in a slightly different way and understand the distribution by counting these non-numerical fields or categories.